Hello, damsels. Hello, knights. Hello, squires. Hello, mites. The little, the little bugs. The mites. I needed the rhyme. I needed it, guys. I'm sorry. This is Stefan, my the thirsty rhymer over here. Mm, just craving a good rhyme, and it's going to be a good time. But I am the host of a comedy advice podcast. If this is your first time, welcome. And I usually don't start off medieval. I don't know why I did that. Hear ye, hear ye, this podcast. Imagine if there were podcasts in the medieval times. Could you imagine that? Oh my God, it'd be like a uh, bubonic plague coming up on everyone. Cause it's, it's really, really, should we wear masks? I don't know. Oh God, yep. All right, getting controversial right at the start. Yep, that's how I like to do it. That's all this podcast is about, pure controversy. No, it's not. It's about a good time. And that's what I'm about to give you with very special guest, Pablo Francisco. I have adored Pablo for, I don't know, years, many, many years. I remember reciting bits for some of his specials on Comedy Central, The Little Tortilla Boy, amazing. His movie announcer voice and his, his impersonations are incredible. And it was such an honor to have him on the pod. We chatted it up, had a great time, and he's just a really cool dude. And if you want to see this really cool dude, Phoenix, he's going to be here this weekend. CB Live links are in the show notes to go see him. And then while you're at it, you little comedy goobers, no, goobers is not the greatest word, you little comedy cadets. Come on over, House of Comedy, September 8th. See me perform at my new show, Trash or Treasure, with Lamar Mitchell JR. Links are in the show notes to that, too. Super excited. It's the first of hopefully many where we're going to bring on comedians. It's going to be like a tournament style, and they're going to have to argue topics if they're trash or if the topic is treasure. Say pineapple on pizza. Is it trash? Is it treasure? You'll find out. The audience decides. You guys get to decide. And, and you know what happens to the loser? They just they get banished, permanently banished from the North Phoenix area. Desert Ridge, nope, they can't step foot in there anymore. So it's going to the high stakes, really. And it's going to be an amazing time. So links are in the show notes there. If you guys haven't yet, please subscribe, leave a review, send a message to me, email me or uh, DM me, follow me on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast, and just keep doing what you're doing. If you guys are like, oh, you know what? The grind is just getting too burdensome. I'm here to tell you, quit, do something else. Find something where it isn't as frustrating. Just take the easy road. It's really fun. I love it. I have not taken the easy road, but I've taken the fun road, you know, and this is a labor of love, but it is labor. And all of the support that you guys give are just really, you guys are like people on the side of the road. If we were in medieval times, you guys would be giving me a knapsack of scones or muffins, and it would give me nourishment to keep on trekking to slay that dragon, which is my insecurity. So I really appreciate you you guys, and you guys are amazing. And I'm going to stop blabbering and let you get into the meaty part of the podcast. Here we go. All right. Hello. Now, can you hear me? No? Yes. Okay. Yes, I oh, can hear all you. Right. What's up, then, pal? Hey, not much. How are you, Pablo? I'm doing fine, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for joining. Yeah, man. So how's your day going? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Just uh, went down to see the wife and she was talking with her therapist right? or her mom. I'm not sure. They're, they're very similar. It, 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 moms can be therapists too. You know, I've, you know, it's a, you know, I, went, I remember one time I went to a family therapist and we had my mom and dad there, you know, and my mom started uh -huh. crying so much. And I was going, I was like, why is she crying, man? And my dad was like, you know, but it was so, it was hilarious because it was other families there and the other families uh -huh. were like spoiled kids and you bought me a restaurant. And I didn't like it. And I was like, going, oh, my God, this is a restaurant? But uh, crazy family. Yeah, you bought me. I remember I was going to be the waitress and you'd be the cook. I didn't like the restaurant. I hated it. I was like, going, geez, what the? Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I was fighting with my parents because I would be like, you wouldn't take me to a restaurant to eat. You <laughs> <laughs> would, would, oh. would never take me to Denny's, man. Remember that shit? That was funny. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, yeah. man. But uh, super excited to have you, man, on a comedy advice podcast where we're going to we've got a lot of comedy. We've got a little bit of advice to sprinkle into. And 
I'm, Do it. I gotta say, I'm really excited to have you for all those listeners who are just listening to that amazing treasure of a voice. Not talking about mine, oh. by the way, of our special guest, oh. Oh. <laughs> Pablo Francisco, joining us today. I'm gonna try, you know, so I'm gonna get that voice now, you know, you got to go into the. <laughs> To the brother, that, that would that be Jimmy Hendrix? You know, thing is, move over, Rover. Yeah, I'm trying to get Ben Diesel. I'm trying to get Ben Diesel down, but Ben Diesel's all, hey, yo, Ro- hey, Corona. It was kind of Fast and Furious, kind of. It's kind of Sylvester Stallone, but I'll get it down. You know, that, too much, too so difficult. That's pretty good. Have you tried taking steroids? Maybe that helps. That's part of it. <laughs> get a steroid daiquiri. Hey, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> a steroid daiquiri. Oh my you god, know, that's furious, eh? But uh, <laughs> he's Riddick, but hey, Riddick, uh, you know. But uh, you know, we, we come to now. Uh, Keanu Reeves, everyone got Keanu. I'm, I'm trying to think of more celebrities. Remember back in like in the '90s? Oh, uh-huh. like, you, 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 you could get. You know, people still knew who Dennis Hopper was. Come on, man, here you go. That kind of thing. Or, now, oh people, my god, you know, or you know. You got Michael J. Fox. He's kind of he's kind of in there. Everyone watches that, you know, kind of. So I'm trying to figure out what celebrity would be, you know, they're all the same. Everyone has the same inflections, kind of sort of. So it's kind of hard to, yeah, you know, pinpoint. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just trying to trying to figure out which I, which one to do. Kevin Hart. I can't do. Well, here's Kevin Hart. Here we go. That's Kevin Hart. But I can't. <laughs> but I can't. Hey, I can't do it. But uh, the, face, like the face. Is hey, a- that's it. That's all. That's Kevin Hart. <laughs> Ouch. That's that's pretty good. You also do an amazing Chris Rock, by the way. Chris Rock. What's the deal with that? I learned that from Jimmy Fallon. What's the deal? Yeah, that's a perfect. <laughs> that's a perfect way to bitch out somebody. You know. What's the deal? I don't understand. You know, my brother would gamble. What are you gambling now? You, you're gonna make money. But if I do it my regular voice. I get my ass kicked. You know. So. Oh man. Oh, oh you that's... know. <laughs> but you're regular. I mean. You are, I have to, well, let me backtrack a little bit. I have, I remember you were one of my favorite comedians, still are, yeah. but I remember quoting you and your Tortilla Boy bit like oh hundreds of times back when well, it I, first came out. Bro, th- thanks, man. I, you know, I, when, I, when people talk about, I was in Domino's Pizza coming up with, I was making pizzas coming up with that that voice. That, yeah. that, that, that and My friend, man, that's not funny. And I went, well, come to the comedy club. And then we put it together, but it was like, you know, tortillas, but you know, when I was a when I, when my brother was in high school, he was on the varsity yeah. bas- uh, a baseball team, right? So I used to be the bat boy, and there was this guy with black glasses and, and long straight hair, and he was, I think, the shortstop. And he goes, "Hey, Pablo, man, he sells tortillas at the corner." And I was going, "That's funny," you know. And so I quite uh... used that. Yeah, I go, he goes, he goes, Pablito, you bat boy sells tortillas at the corner. And I go, that's so I just put that in there, and it, somehow it just moved in there. So I think I owe him a residual or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's hilarious and and that was back was that when you were living in tucson because i know you grew up there before you went yeah, to tempe was, and then la yeah tucson arizona that was uh yeah tucson arizona and then uh and then, then went to tempe arizona like when i was like 25 but i was just moving back and forth with that because they had the improv up there that was like yeah. a big magic castle of it so it was uh, to get to drive 90 miles in my 280z you know, the going on there was like a big thing. So I got to pay for gas, you know, 90 miles. Oh, not, oh my know. gosh. And that that's a uh, really boring drive, too, because it's just a straight shot from Tucson. Straight to, shot, man. And, and, but you're thinking about, dude, you won't. OK, I got the improvs off baseline. You got to go pull in there. And uh, it was yeah, great yeah. there because uh, I had a friend of mine. There's, there's always those fans, those guys who, who want to get in comedy. And it was right by uh, ASU. It was it ASU? Yeah. Arizona State. Yeah. So they had the college students there, and this college guy goes, "Hey man, I really like your comedy." And I go, "Really?" He goes, "He goes, uh, you, you, he goes, I live right across the street from the improv, and he had a nice pimp out place because his dad, uh, his, he, you know, he was going to school, and his dad, his dad revolutionized hair implants, right? So I was going, "All right." Huh. So he had the he had the Apple computers, he had the uh, the the phone identification thing before everyone else did. So I would go over there, and he he smoked a lot of weed, and it was all right, and he, and he drank coffee because he's from New York. And uh, he nice. goes, you can stay at my place anytime. So I was staying at his place. And then he, he liked comedy so much that other comics were in there. And they're, I see Doug Stanhope. I go, oh, Doug, now you're staying here too. And Doug Stanhope, I go, yeah, I stayed here. And me, Doug, 
it was so funny because you know it, we, oh. Doug would use that place up like like crazy and but it was so funny because the guy wanted to be a comic so Doug Stanhope goes listen we're gonna go I go so where are you going I go where are you going with Doug he's he showing the, the comedy ropes and he goes guy goes yeah he's showing me the comedy ropes but he took me to this nude bar and he wants to do a comedy at this nude bar and I go well that's not the, that's not the place to start you got to start over here and yeah. as we was that next you know more comics are at his place. And Doug Stanhope would always just, we'd just be, oh, what do you do? That guy let you borrow his car? He was, he was his, uh, his RX-7. And I go, man, all right, we're borrowing his car now. And he's taking around. So it was guys like that that was great for the improv. It's like, oh, I don't have to stay at the improv condo. I just go over to Gordy's house and stay over there. And it was great because he he, he, he did all the advertisements on his, uh, you know, on his Apple because he, back then it was hard to have a Macintosh. And he did my oh, business yeah. cards. And Doug stand up was there, and we all fully took it a great advantage of. But he's we still t- keep in touch with him. But Doug, hilarious dude, oh. hilarious. Did he ever become a stand up comic too, or did he just still? Oh uh, no. Okay, what happened was he. Uh, I took him on. Bud Freeman at the Improv goes. Would well, you like to go on a cruise and you can bring a friend? So I said, all right. Would you like to come? So he came on. Right. It was Adam Ferrara uh-huh. was on this cruise. And he, that guy was killing it, right? But we were too busy drinking and having a good time, right? But he was the kind of guy who got in good with Bud Freeman. Bud Freeman was, he's not that great of a comedian, but when he comes into New York, make sure that he calls me. So he basically was the guy who, who was the, the dude that would, the friend you would bring who would bust out and, you know, buy champagne. And so, and he was just the coolest guy. And uh, one day, my uh, my manager, I had two managers, Dave Goldman, he goes, he goes, so Pavlito, he goes, I, I handle Billy Idol and I handle Will Smith. And uh, who's your friend here? And uh, my friend goes, uh, he came into the, we're about to do a Comedy Central special. So we're in my friend's hotel. And David Goldman yeah. opens up the door and goes, I smell marijuana, Pablito. I told you not to smoke. I go, I'm not smoking. I don't smoke marijuana. So he looked at my friend and goes, so these guys are the bad guys. So my friend goes, you know what? Hey, I want to tell him that I'm not a bad guy. So during the special, he, they were like, are going head to head. And he goes, he goes, what do you want to do? And my friend Gordon goes, I want to be an actor. And he goes, well, I tell you what. He goes, you go to school for acting? And my friend went like enrolled in Juilliard for like 13 months, right? And it comes out and that, and, and uh, Dave Goldman goes, so you became 13 months an actor? Okay, come on, I'll r- run you to a- ABC. And my friend goes, no, no, I don't want to do that. I just, uh, I know. It, but it was, no. he took all these acting classes. Just to, I go, dude, well, just go and just do stand up. It's a better, it's a better stepping stone, you know. Yeah, you know, you don't have to go. Yeah, yeah and, you, and and we're good actors, you know, behind a microphone, but still, it's uh, yeah. Attention, listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston. Do we have a pube problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the performance package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job from the leaders in male grooming. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP. Now, I've tried to trim my clackers with regular trimmers, scissors, heck, even just yanking them out. But you know what? Each time there's blood or tears or both. So guys, don't be a silly goose. Be a smart duck. Get the new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even Uranus. I'll tell you what, I got one and I used it and I went on several trips around the galaxy. Abort hairy balls and buzz Lightyear that Woody with Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. It was really cool. It's it's the networking thing that you got to do, and it's so much fun doing it, but they'll the win them over. Pablito, you're smoking marijuana. I'm not smoking pot. And my friend, I'm the one who smoked pot. I'm, 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 the, I'm, the, I'm stepping up for Pablo. And I'm like, all right, cool. So that's how, that's, it, that's how it was. It was, it was oh. a networking thing. That You know what? And it's really interesting, too, because I feel like that that's a tr- very true statement, too, about networking and its importance. And I know back when you were in Tucson, you ended up hooking up with Robert Rodriguez and ended up doing some shows with him. And then right. at the Tempe Improv, um, I right. forgot the name. Robert Hartman, I believe, also Ro- that kind of connected you. He owned it. Yeah. He owned it. He was a, he was a main cat to the food and beverage at the time. Right. And uh-huh. in that, in there, uh, 
he ran the, uh, the one in Irvine and he was overlooking the one in Tempe. And Tempe was like a huge, big deal. And what we kind of kind of I was reading this book, how to, you know, how to approach people. So I went, what, what does it take for me to work for you? And he looked at me, he goes, who are you? I'm on Pablo Mount Calamity. He goes, give me six minutes by tomorrow. I go, perfect. And I, I went there, I gave him six minutes. He, I like it. And it, it kind of rolled from there. At that point on, he, he was, a, he was yeah. listen, I'm not a manager, but I can, I can find you a manager. It was kind of odd, kind of strange. I went, all right. Uh-huh. And uh, David Spade is from Phoenix. So he would bounce in, call my manager and go, Hey, listen, I need a new Range Rover. Can you, can you, can you put me up for a few nights, uh, two nights? And he would sell it to shows and buy himself a Range Rover. I go, so I met David Spade there. <laughs> super nice guy. And wow. uh, yeah, and he was, uh, uh, I saw him in the audience. I go, Oh my God, it's David Spade. And he was just kicking back. I, I see him leaving. I go, so I tell the host, I go, Hey man, tell him I say, he opened up for David Spade and he's been on a, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's on a new reality show called Butt Plugs, right? Or something like that, right? <laughs> right? And uh, so he goes up there, he goes, yeah, he opened up for David Spade and David Spade stops. I see him stop. And I went on stage. And I go, hey, everybody. And I did I, I did like a, a hack Robin Williams joke. I go, hey, it's here, me fucking a duck. I go, ah, 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 ah. Right, right? And then I, started, <laughs> I did my show and I get off stage and, and, David, and David Spade goes, uh, the manager goes, come into my office real quick. And he goes, hey, I liked your set, but the, the humping joke thing, I go, oh, that's kind of like a Robin Williams. I was trying to get Dave's attention. And Dave goes, you know what, my Dave, I just want to tell you something. He goes, I, he goes, the first joke you did, I knew it was kind of hacky. And I go, I go, but I go, but when I saw the rest of your act, I knew that you genuinely write your own stuff. I go, I know, I just did that to, to get you out. He goes, all right, so you do a Denny's joke. And it's a very good Denny's joke. It's, it's stock, but you have a good yeah. twist. Now you do Indian jokes. A lot of people do Indian jokes. He goes, that was good. And uh, he goes, and you did an Oprah joke. A lot of people do Oprah jokes. I go, I go, but yours, Oprah joke was good. Oprah's so big that she bought Uh an island for her boyfriend uh, off the coast of her ass. That was like the joke, right? (laughs) And and so David Spade goes, you know what? You're in, you're all cool. And it was fun like that. And it just moved on. But yeah, it's, it's, it's those moments. Because, you know, it's a small community, even though it's mighty, the comedy. So you can, you can. You can't really take people's jokes and, and do that because that's that's the golden rule. So I would copyright right. my jokes at the improv. I manage to go every joke you use, make sure you do it here. Therefore, when someone does it, you know, or something similar, you can we can we can tell them to shut it down. So that was yeah, that was you know a lot of fun. That's awesome. That that's so cool. And and um, I don't think I mentioned this, but I'm living in Phoenix, Arizona right now. So this I'm going to see all- you in next week. I'll be up there. Yes. Be at the- in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, the most hottest town on the planet, man. Oh my God. We're gonna, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm from Tucson, but I'm Tucson, I mean, Phoenix, man. I was, oh God. But uh, incredible yeah. city because uh, I met two hot girls there and didn't, didn't close the deal, didn't close it. But they, was everyone this, thought I did. Was, it, well, was but, this from the, Scor- the Scorpion concert that you met? Them? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the Scorpion concert. Yeah. Good memory. Or, uh, yeah. These unknowns, unsolved mysteries. I'm Robert oh, Stott. <laughs> yes. By the way, just backtracking one sec before you tell that story. Um, you're, you're, you started to go into a David Spade impersonation. I don't know, consciously or subconsciously, oh, but it yeah, sounded yeah, pretty yeah. spot on. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm David. How are you? Oh, it's killing me, Bob. I'm going. Uh, Saturday Night Live. Oh, my God. It's killing me sometimes. But, but, uh, well, Dave, oh, Dave was. God. Cool dude, and uh, I just saw him the other night. He's hilarious, and he's still nice. he's still edgy. But I don't want his comedy. He just goes up there when it the, uh, the way he, he's on high energy, but he's just his his topics are so he knows how to he knows mm-hmm. how to do it, man. So yeah, yeah. that's uh, the yeah. Dave Spade kind of thing, you know. But uh, <laughs> that's my manager too. I'm- I, I, I'm very like jealous too because I, I, there's some, I'm a very novice impressionist. Right. I okay. can do like two or three, but right. there are some that I try and do, and I just, for the life of me, I can't really do them. And David Spade was one of them because I was watching the movie, The Emperor's New Groove, as an oh. adult. Yes. Right, right. And uh, I was trying to do David. I can do Kronk a little bit. Like, hey, he's right. not. Uh, yeah, I could do a right. squirrel. What are you doing? Right. Uh, but, right, yeah, but David yeah, Spade, yeah. no. 
I can't. <laughs> yeah, isn't it that, no, Disney or Pixar? Was it one of the two? I can't remember. I think it was Disney. Still watch Aladdin once in a while, but who does that? That's Robin Williams doing that. But uh, Jamie Fox is uh, he has a one that he plays a piano, a blues pianist. All these cartoons are coming out. There's so many of these Pixar cartoons coming out. It's it's incredible. But uh, one after yeah. the other. Have you thought about doing some? Because I know you do voiceover. Go well, ahead, what I've done is well, let's say, like Pixar when they when they were doing this. Um, it's about a bunch of seals that are, it's about a bunch of animals, seals, and, and I forgot what it was, but they would call me in, right? And they already have it casted and they would just have me go off the mic on the mic on, 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 the, on their ideas and then they would use those. But, you know, the, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah. as that goes, you know, I, I just, you know, I just um, just did some Subaru commercials and I, right now over the cameos and stuff like that, I'm just doing oh, the, the Don LaFontaine, are you ready this summer? And or <laughs> the, the, the guy who does those infomercial, the, you know, the Hercules and all your favorite Disney characters, like that kind of guy. <laughs> it's like the Casey Kasem, but you know, that's right. It's, it's Samson and all your favorite Disney characters, those, those kind of things. But uh, other than uh -huh. that, yeah, we're going to get more into it. We, you know, we're working on this, uh, it's a secret project, but it's a cartoon. It's about Pacoima. It's a, and it's about uh, Dustin Waibara who's a comedian and we put this sh this cartoon together and uh and hbo is uh you know, they, they 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 bought out they they bought it we're in negotiations with them but it's a it's, yeah so we're gonna start getting some cartoon mixes going on it's gonna be fun and we'll make fun of everybody you know the neighborhood brats and stuff but oh and that you know you know i've been close to a few here so i'll be right back i got this one on yeah yeah i got this one i got okay this was one this is one we got some. This is this is called this is called Motor Mouth. We this was with uh, this was with Disney, right? And Steve Marmel put nice. that together. And he goes, "Call me up." He goes, "He was producing Family Guy." He goes, "Just come on over here. I'm going to try this Disney cartoon for Latinos." And we pulled it up. We we got signed. We we did a a little deal with them, but it it kind of fell through because there was a uh, you're you're from Chile and there's lots of Latinos around. So what Latinos will watch it? Will Cubans watch it? Will Puerto Ricans watch it? So George Lopez kind of like broke the ice by going, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a Puerto Rican mom and a and a and a Chilean or whatever. And they put them all together in one thing, and it, that's how it works. So in order for Latinos to come together, you gotta put other Latinos from different places there. So Cubans with the Puerto Ricans and and the Mexicans with the Chilianos, and it's like, all right. So it's a it's a big cluster of quackity quacks. Oh my gosh, that that is hey, I mean, sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know it is, you know. But when they start speaking Spanish, you know, it, 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 the the dialect's different. Do you said it's too close? Then this means that, and okay, rice, you know, beans. But you know, you know. So I'm just, you know, there. You go. Look, I'm the white Latino, so I hang out at Lowe's. I don't hang out at you know Home Depot, right? So I go to Walmart. No, but uh, but you know, oh my that's how God. it is. That's that's a yeah. I see. I'm the white Italian, so I hang out at Fazoli's. I don't hang out at the Olive Garden. <laughs> the, white the white Italian. <laughs> most Italians, most Italians, are, most Italian gangster guys are really sensitive. Hey, did you go to the Love Hamper? Did you did you buy a hamburger? Did you did you did you to, to, to tell me? Did you buy? Did you, okay, that's right. All Italians turn themselves in. Hey, stupid cop! I'm the one who killed Jimmy the Fish. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, come on! <laughs> <laughs> they like they brag about they eat they eat bread and sauce and we killed them pure ninety five and well, huh? wait did you did, hey did you uh, change the channel just did you did you change the channel that's it <laughs> come here you know but uh, they're, they're 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 so uh, how do you say they're so uh, predictable sometimes hey I didn't kill them I didn't do that I didn't do that did I kill them hey we talking huh? hey we do huh? we do <laughs> yeah. meanwhile the white Italian is like. I did it. It was yeah. Me. I'm so sorry. The white Italian. I'm the white Italian. I did it. Uh, I cover it just nicely. Uh, to put the blood chunks over here. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You, use wire. You're, you're, here, here's the pinpoint at the address where you can find it. Okay. <laughs> the, the white Italian goes. Listen, technically, you ran by the larynx, then squeeze, and then <laughs> be as unconscious. Then you know. Then give it boom. On that, but, Sub no, but not that subscribe, guy. yeah, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tips and tricks for that, being able to that's, Hey, my YouTube channel. Listen, I love mafia movies, but I'm not Italian. That's why I go to Mafia Mingle. Mafia Mingle. That's right, Mafia <laughs> Mingle. 
That's right. Everybody's going to Mafia Mingle. You know, I went to Mafia Mingle, and guess what? I got a whole new identity. It's fantastic. We went into hiding. I feel like a new person. That's right. Mafia Mingle. Just come on. You want to mingle? Go to Mafia Mingle. You know, <laughs> every you Wednesday Mafia at mingle. the Olive Garden. <laughs> the, the Olive Garden. See you at the Olive Garden. Pooh Bar. Save the, <laughs> save the bread, okay? That's save right. The bread. Save the bread at the Olive Garden. One olive. Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, save the bread, huh? Come, come let's put some here. Come on. I got the oh. Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh. Hilarious. Oh. I, I'm so sorry because I interrupted you about the story that you were going to tell about the two girls that you met at the Scorpion concert. Oh, okay, okay. Well, we're going to make it real quick, real quick. Met two girls at a Scorpion's yeah. concert and they go, what do you do for a living? And uh, I said, well, I, uh, I do stand up. And they go, I'm doing this amateur night to, uh, in, two, in Phoenix, right? And in about two yeah. weeks. And they go, sure. Before I get there, now, I, never, I never performed there before. So I'm cruising, I'm driving up there and I get a call when I, when I pull up at the improv. They go, Pablo, man, there's some girls. And the, and the owner, the manager goes, are you Pablo? Yeah, and they go, come on in here. There's some girls that want to, that are here for you. And I go, whoa, whoa. And I, I go, shit. So I did a guest spot, and it was those girls with a bunch of other girls from Bourbon Street, right? So I was like, hey, uh -huh. what's up? And they both grabbed me on each side. And they go, hey, Pablo, Pablo bangs really well. Like, when I got off stage, I went, hey. And they, I go, I didn't bang them. I didn't have sex with them. And everyone thought I did. Right. I go, I didn't do it. I swear to God. I never did. Right. And, and that, but they kept saying that. And it, it, the word got around. And John Panetta, there, the big comedian, goes, hey, Pablo, anytime you need to come to Boston. And they were flirting with everybody there. And uh, and we became good friends. And um, it was it was weird because every, they, they started asking out the managers for on a date. And the managers would call me up, Pablo, i call me. It's OK if I go up with the girls. I go, listen, man, I, I listen. They're not my girls. And girls goes, no, what we do is we ask them on a date. And like, the day before, we cancel. We tell them, hey, we got to do something else. And I was like, oh, right. But. It was like it was like that. And then that's when Robert Hartman goes, hey, when I said, he goes, are you probably are you the one who gets the girls? And I was going, right. What does it take for me to work for you? And he's like, you know what? Who are these girls? And I, from that point on, it just who are these girls? And they just come to every show and didn't close the deal. But they, everyone was believing I did. And that's how that's where I'm here now. That's basically now. You, so Pablo, you are such you're such a nice guy that you're probably the only guy that was trying to say, hey, I didn't sleep with them instead of- I didn't sleep, I did. yeah, I swear to God. And it was uh, <laughs> kind of strange because the guy, that that Gordon guy that I, who lived across the street from the improv, well, I was yeah. at Topless Bar and I saw Candy Cantaloupe, the big, the, the porn star, right? And her name is uh -huh. not Candy Cantaloupe. Her name is uh, is Valerie Cantaloupe. But, uh, so- oh, that, <laughs> Is that her Christian okay. name? <laughs> That's her Christian name. <laughs> and she, she, I introduced them together. They fell in love the first night. So we went from his apartment to a bigger apartment on Thomas Road, a condominium, humongous uh, tanning beds. And she goes, you can stay here. And guess who's staying there too? Doug Stanhope. Hey, I go, Doug's here. Doug's staying at Candy Cantaloupe's too. So we kind of like, hooked, when they would leave town on tour, me and Doug would just rip, go crazy in the place because she had treadmills. She had tanning beds. But anyhow, I was a good boy though. But uh, yeah, but uh <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. No. Nice, nice. Uh, well, Pablo, we're going to get into the advice portion of the podcast where sure. we actually we're going to we're going to answer some questions from okay. the Reddit advice column. So okay. these are not serious questions. You can answer them silly. You, you are right, allowed we'll to answer them silly. Yes. With the dash right, of truth. Yes. Okay. Ex yes, exactly. We can do a dash of truth and then just a heaping helping of hilarity. I think Let's that's it, perfect. I'm down with that. I'm down with it. Uh, Nice. Okay, so this first question says, boyfriend didn't do anything for our anniversary. My boyfriend and I have been dating for one year as of yesterday. I am happy with him, and I love him so much. We are both kind of broke, so I wasn't expecting him to get me anything crazy or take me out anywhere fancy, but I figured he'd at least write me a little note or pick me flowers or something. I painted him a picture of us and wrote him a funny little note to go with it. I am not meaning to expect something from him gift-wise. I just felt like he kind of forgot. Um, even though he says he didn't. Mm. Oh, Pablo. So that's that was a long question, right. but that was it. Have you have you celebrated one year anniversaries with any girls? And uh, you know what? I, I, I you know I never have. I just, just kept on rolling because you know, basically it's this. I treat them if I get a girl friend, I treat it like an anniversary every day of week, man. Because I figure I, I'm on the road. I come back. 
you know, let's fly over here and let's do this and stuff. But I make every day, I go to Amazon because Amazon make every day your anniversary. Just send yourself a gift and give it to them. So yeah, anniversaries. Yeah, you know what? I never did it like a yearly thing. I just would just party on the whole way, you know, have fun and, you know, get crazy. But uh, no, love rings together, you know, no. Yeah. I didn't do that. Oh. I, I like that. That's like, uh, it, it, you basically do the carpe diem of relationships. It's, yeah, uh, yeah carpe, that's, uh, the, yeah, what, what carpe, what's that? The carpe diem? What is, what is that? Yeah, carpe diem, I think it's Latin for um, give presents to your girlfriend every day. No, it's it's uh, Latin for seize the day. Just take See, treat every day like it's your last, maybe? I don't know if no. that far but i would say it would be like you know, like, you know what you take them to rite aid right you find out what they like and then you just you know grab those things for them you know what i'm saying <laughs> no perk plus none of that stuff you know no white rain you know you don't want white rain you know okay here you go yeah. oh conditioner oh my god next is all right but that, that's my birthday <laughs> anniversary there you go oh yeah you exfoliate okay you like the tan okay i got that i'll bring it i'll bring it all home so i, like I think that. girls just... like that yeah right it's a good thing you know mm-hmm that's true. And then they look good for you as well. So they're, well, yeah, they're you, looking, skin looks yeah, great, back, they're glowing. Yeah, they love the nail file things. Here's a nail file thing. Here's a little squashy squash, you know. And, you know, and uh, I bought them, you know, this this girl, I bought her, uh, it's a water, I'm going to get a break, okay. It's, a, it's an attachment that goes to the, the um, as a matter of fact, I have one here, a, a few brand new ones. I keep, a, I buy them. It's for, it's, it, it cleans, it's, it goes in the shower and it cleans, you know, the woman when she wants to use it and it's 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 it's, it's filtered water and it's and it's perfect and i brush my teeth with it <laughs> no just kidding <laughs> but anyway, but no but it's something to it's, have it's, it's flavored yeah. toothpaste yeah i yeah, like so, that <laughs> or the chlorine you know so yeah and it's um those kind of things the girls like uh, you know they like the bass you know that kind of thing so i'll uh you know i'll buy them something you know that goes in the bath or something like good old you know I'm talking about bath, bath salts. That's what I get them. No, so yeah, <laughs> bath salts, bath salts, and, and candles, and you know, generic wine, Asti Spumante. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's about it. You know, a little here and that's there, awesome. maybe a Schwarzy crystal there, but that's that's about it. You know, and uh, that, that's great. Yeah, oh, maybe well, a Netflix. I, but, yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's a great, what, what a bunch of great solutions for this person. So I feel like we kind of nailed that one. We can go to the next and last. Yeah, question. let's go to that next one. It says, is it rude to make a gift in front of the recipient? I'm going to a friend's house to watch a movie. I am knitting a baby blanket for her, which she knows about so she could approve the style. Is it rude for me to knit the blanket in front of her? Watching a movie is a solid block of time to work on it. Thanks. Okay, well, does she know about the knitting? Does the girl know? Are you knitting me something? Because my my aunt used to knit a sweater, and I was going, "Hey, I go, is that for me?" And she was, "No, that's for somebody else." But it was was for me, so so she would do it in front of me. I'm thinking it was for somebody else, and then she give it to me. I'm, hey, all right, man, I look I look like you know, oh my god, some '70s cheesy you know sweater. But <laughs> but all back then, when when my aunt would knit a sweater, you, know, you want a sweater? Okay. But I go, is that for me? And she would no, she work on it and working you know, it was done. I go, and then she put on me, that's for you. And I go, oh, you got me. Uh-huh. So she, yeah, oh. I knit it in front of them. But uh, what are you knitting? That's what I want to know. I mean, is people knit nowadays? Just go to Amazon oh. and just pick, pick some textiles or, you know, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. There, yeah, exactly. Just buy yeah. something for him. Why are you, are you wasting a, your time? Yeah, yeah making a couch doily. I mean, go, yeah, all right. <laughs> Should I knit? See, mm. I think that's really smart because if you put in all that effort to make a really shitty sweater and they're like, oh, they feel like they have to wear it or even worse for you, they throw it away and you're like, what happened to that sweater? And like, oh, uh, I yeah. got lost. And you're like, maybe I spent 80 hours on this. <laughs> Now I look like Mr. Roper from Three's Company. Hey, what's going on? You know, yeah. Good Lord, man. Exactly. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I look like Ronnie Dangerfield in Caddyshack. All right, I got the, the sweater. All right. You know? It's knitting. Come on. I knit. <laughs> Versace. Put Versace on it or something. I don't know. Good Lord. Oh, there you go. Yeah, make it Gucci. Make a Gucci yeah. sweater. Yeah, I just like go that. and just, just Photoshop it, the Gucci thing, and then take it to a a patch place they'll make the patch look like gucci and just stick it on there you go with my course you can do it it's that easy 
<laughs> Subscribe to Pablo and the White Italian for more tips. Yeah, that's right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could do, then we could do knockoffs and then sell them on the street. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> Oh, well, Pablo, we've reached the end of the podcast. And I have to say, I am overjoyed. This was such a good time. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, my friend, it was good. And uh, be in Phoenix, uh, I think in a week over there in, uh, it's called uh, Stand Up Live. I'll be there at the Copper Blues. Oh, very nice. Copper Blues is like the 90120 place. It's like 90120. Hey, on the next Copper Blues. Hey, what's going on, Brenda? (laughs) On the Copper Blues. (laughs) Do copper blues get drunk see show it will be yeah it'll be pablo francisco and then nine teenage teenagers with drama all around him yeah brenda give me the keys so (laughs) all the luke perry's will be there yeah i'll see you there my friend awesome i'm really excited bring in the wife we're gonna have a good time i'll buy you chicken fingers man oh no (laughs) nice nice uh well thank you again pablo this was awesome oh man what a scrumptious episode decadent if you will finger licking good hope you guys didn't get your fingers too dirty when you were in that episode but um clean them off if you did get some sanitizer and then go on leave a review follow me go see pablo go see me support us we are the jesters of today and we need that love we just crave it so badly and your guys's love is so delicious it's like mom's love nah but strangers love so good so good So love you guys all. Thank you so much. Big old gooch smooch.